We went to South Sudan uh, uh, when uh, the North uh, started uh, bombing and created a refugee crisis uh, in the South. But it wasn't until uh, we took a really hard look at what this kind of service means to the veteran when one of the original members of the team, Clay Hunt, who's a Marine sniper, uh, served in Iraq and Afghanistan with my business partner, Jake, when uh, on March uh, 30th of 2011, he took his own life. And he became one of those statistics that uh, you hear. 22 U.S. military veterans commit suicide every day. It's a national emergency. Well, when this happened, we took a really hard look at, at what this model of continued service, what continued service means to the veteran. And we came up with three things that, that the veteran loses when he takes off his uniform, and that's purpose, community, and sense of self. And we decided that, you know what, we can give back the veteran those three things, purpose, community, and sense of self, um, um, through this continued service. So where we were a disaster response organization that used veterans for service, we became a veteran service organization that uses disaster response. We shifted the focus of the organization's mission from the disaster victim to the veteran. We became a veteran service organization, just happens to be good at disaster response. And with this, we launched domestic operations. First in Tuscaloosa, after the uh, tornado was there two years ago, and then in Joplin, Missouri, where this was, uh, where we're doing search and rescue, debris clearing, and, and expedient home repair. And like I said, it's that purpose, community, and sense of self that we're giving back to the veterans. But our second reflection point, uh, inflection point, uh, of the organization was Hurricane Sandy. Now, prior to, we, uh, you know, a disaster would take place in, say, uh, uh, Joplin, and what we do is we establish a radius from 250 to 500 miles around that disaster, and we pull in as many of these veterans as possible. Now, there's 2.5 million uh, veterans post 9-11 are veterans who've served in Iraq and Afghanistan and since left the service. And they've gone back to their hometowns, their small communities across the United States. And so, depending upon our volunteer density, we can pull in as many of those and set that radius as wide as we need to. But in Sandy, what was different was that every day at our Ford operating base in the Rockaways, hundreds of civilians would show up during the week and thousands on the weekends. And so we looked at our model of deploying these small eight to 10 man teams and said, you know what? You've got eight to 10 potential leaders there. And so we broke down those teams and we took one to two veterans and we attached 20 to 40 civilians and we gave them the safety brief, the personal protective equipment, the work orders and the tools to go out and conduct these mucking operations in the Rockaways, essentially going in and gutting a house. And those veterans served as leaders uh, for those civilians helping bridge that civilian military divide that exists in the country today. Now, this is what we did, search and rescue, route clearance, debris removal, home mucking, health and welfare checks, and emergency operations staffing. We filled over 900 work orders, saving the community an estimated almost $4 million. Um, these are some of the partners uh, that helped us uh, uh, accomplish our mission during Hurricane Sandy, which was our largest mission to date. Um, Goldman Sachs, uh, uh, JetBlue provided over 150 uh, free flights. The Home Depot Foundation provided all the tools and equipment that we used in the field. Um, Brooklyn Boulders, a rock climbing gym in Brooklyn, is where, was our where we staged our operations from. This 100,000 square foot uh, rock climbing gym uh, there where we you know, sleep at night on the concrete floor. But there was one thing that really transformed our operation. Now, Many of you may be heard of the Stay Classy Awards, or the Classy Awards. It's the largest philanthropic award uh, show in the country. Uh, and being a nonprofit, we've taken part and we've actually won uh, in the past. Well, my partner was at the Classies uh, last year and ran into uh, a, a man by the name of Brian Fishman backstage who works for a company called Palantir. Well, Palantir is a software program that, that's used in the intelligence community uh, and they can import basically big data sets and discover latent connections. It's something that I used in the intelligence community uh, to discover you know, latent connections between, say, terrorists and IED explosions and things like that. So, but what Palantir did, and they said, 
hey, we'd like to help out. We think we can help you out. And it probably took about seven phone calls in one day for my partner to finally say, just meet us out there in the Rockaways. And they did, uh, because we couldn't see how exactly Palantir was going to have an impact on our operations at first. But they did. They came out. And what Palantir did is they ingested all of our work orders into uh, these mobile handsets. They Literally, our teams could go out and do an assessment in a house and enter in all that data of the house, take a picture of it, and then we'd pull back and we'd put it on a map and we'd look for clusters of activity and we'd sign those work orders based upon those clusters of activity. It transformed our response. So Palantir is something that we're uh, using moving forward and we've used it uh, three times since then in uh, Arkansas most recently, also in Adairsville, uh, Georgia, and also in uh, Hattiesburg, Mississippi. Uh, it's something that now is being used uh, by Team Rubicon and another organization called Disaster Relief. And it's literally transforming our response. Now, that's one way that we're using tech to, to impact, uh, impact disaster, improve disaster response. We're also focused on improving community. Our original mission for veterans, creating it, giving them that purpose, that sense of self. Well, to answer that community part, if we go back to Clay, my friend who uh, committed suicide on March 30th of 2011, he had recently moved from Los Angeles to Houston, and he complained about not knowing anyone, about being alone. And like I said, there's 2.5 million Iraq and Afghanistan veterans, and they when they get out of the service, they lose that physical connection to the guys they served with. They go back to their hometowns, and oftentimes their friends have moved on. So when we showed up at his funeral, there were three Marines there who lived within 10 miles of Clay, who served with him, fought with him in Iraq, but they didn't know it. They didn't know they were that close to each other. So it got us to thinking, right, how do we solve this problem of veteran reintegration? How do we build community? Because for whatever reason, the old model of veteran integration, which is the American Legion and, the, and the, the VFW, which served well for my grandparents when they came home from World War II, is that, that old model is just not working for this millennial generation of veterans. We're not going to those brick and mortar posts across the country. That's not the way that we're maintaining community. That's not the way we're sharing these stories, uh, uh, finding uh, people who understand our plight. So what we did is we built an app. And in order to build this app, we actually studied a lot of the other social networking apps down there, including downloading Grindr onto our phones just to see what the user experience or Grindr. You got to do it. So you got to do the research. So, so basically what it is is if you consider taking all the Marines that I served with and putting them in a squad and then getting push notifications with each other when we come within a set distance, or seeing all the people, or and seeing all the people, all the veterans who are around you who are also using the app that come within your perimeter. All right, so it's our solution to maintaining community for the military veteran uh, uh, population in the United States. So, yes? Can you verify that you're using the people that you're not looking at right now? So, not right now, though we're talking with uh, uh, Blake Hall with Troop ID. Um, because they've, they've built a, a, a great platform to verify, but right now we're letting the community manage itself. So, um, so PauseDrop is, is uh, uh, available right now on the Apple Store. It's being developed on Android. We're basically iterating, and, and, and we are, um, uh, before we develop on Android, we're, we're, we're first perfecting it on iOS, and we're, it's being uh, tested right now amongst 3,000 beta users uh, across the country. So getting back to, to, to what we do, this is a great quote from, from uh, one of the members of Team Rubicon, uh, Ford Cypher, and he said, you know, our generation of vets isn't really into joining organizations like the VFW or the Legion, but we do need to share our stories and experiences. When we go out on these disaster relief missions, it's very therapeutic and we're doing something tangible and immediate to help people. And I think this is important. This is going to be important because, you know, it was my experience um, when I was, I served in, in Iraq for 
20, uh, uh, 22 months uh, as a civilian, not in uniform. But it was my experience that progress was something that was really hard to identify. Um, and uh, that's really frustrating when you're risking your life and progress is really hard to identify and when you feel like you're spinning uh, your wheels in the mud. Um, but when you come home and you take part in a disaster response mission and you're either saving the life of a child in Port-au-Prince or you're roofing someone's house in Joplin, Missouri because a tornado just ripped it off, progress is tangible. You can identify. It's immediate. And that's extremely cathartic to the veteran. So in closing, um, I just wanted to uh, point out that we're using these tech solutions from Palantir to PASREP, Palantir to improve disaster response, PASREP to create community for veterans. Uh, after service, and uh, and I think that was um, uh, just two important things I just wanted to get across in the for the 2.0 conference here. Any questions?